Hi, welcome to the third and final session on intuitive ideas, geometric ideas underlying Lebesgue measure theory. So I would like to make it brief because many of you want to get into measure theory quickly. Okay, but my suggestion is please go through all these three videos, try to follow as much as possible the line of thinking geometric intuitive ideas, don't worry about rigor try to develop intuition. So this will help you to follow very rigorous treatment of Lebesgue measure theory later. Okay. So with these preliminaries, let me get started. <laughs> so what we want to show is we have defined measure of a subset A of R or RK to be okay the infimum or GLB of okay summation measure of J J n n varies over so that A is contained in union J n and J n's are open intervals. Alright I hope I got everything correctly. Right, so we saw this m is a function from p of r k to zero infinity, and it's at including infinity satisfies measure of j equal to length of j j in interval, and two, it's a translation invariant x plus j equal to measure of j equal to measure of j plus x. We are not proved, but these are all very easy and if A is contained in B implies measure of A is less than or equal to measure of B monotonicity and 4 is that measure of C times A equal to mod C to the power K into measure of A where C is a real number A is a subset of RK and we can also prove equivalently if A equal to union AN then measure of A is less than equal to summation measure of a, a n. Okay, all these things can be proved. The one, what is missing is a countable additivity. Okay, so we are going to claim. Okay, so can does m satisfy countable additivity? Okay, I will not go into too much of a detail, but this article of mine will give, and later we'll also learn that in a much more detail. So suppose let us take zero one. Okay, in this you define an equivalence relation x equal to y if and only if x minus is rational, right? So this defines equivalence classes. So let E be okay the set of representatives from each equivalence class. Right? So, if this is an equivalence class, take one representative x in this or x dash, some equivalent, okay? Exactly only one set of unique representatives. That is, from each equivalence class, I take only one. Now, notice that E is a subset of 0, 1. Right? Therefore, measure of E, what are the possibilities? Either 0 or it is positive. Okay? These are the only possibilities. Right? Now, what I am going to show is, suppose Rn is a sequence, okay? Enumerations, a sequence of all rationals in minus 1 to plus 1. Because notice that if I take x minus y, Okay, this is less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to minus 1, right? Because x is less than or equal to 1, y is greater than or equal to 0, <coughs> therefore minus y is equal to 1. Okay, so my x could be 0, y could be minus 1, therefore these are the possibilities for x minus y. Okay, right. So let's take all these rationals, let En be E plus Rn, 
then what you can show is 0 1 is contained in union E n and this itself is contained in let us say minus 1 to 2 ok because any x in E is between 0 and x less than or equal to 1 therefore x plus E ok R n plus E will be less than or equal to R n is minus 1 to plus 1 therefore minus 1 Okay, this will be contained in minus one to plus one. Right, this is R n. Now, by translation invariant, we know measure of R n plus E is same as measure of E. But we can also show. Okay, R n plus E intersection R m plus E is non-empty if or only if r n equal to r m. Therefore, this collection E n is pairwise disjoint. Right? And let E equal to union of E n, then as you observed, 0 1 is contained in E and that itself is contained in minus 1 to plus 2. Therefore, measure of E by monotonicity city should be less than or equal to 3 and greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, this must follow, right. But remember, E is a pairwise design. These are this pairwise design. Therefore, measure of E, if if countable additivity holds, measure of E should be equal to summation of measure of E n. But therefore, measure of E n is always a constant C. This constant may be 0 or C is positive. Right. Therefore, this means okay, measure of V is either infinite or 0. Oh, sorry, or 0 or infinite. If C is 0, this is but we know measure of V should be less than or equal to V. So, what does this contradiction show? So, please pay attention. Do not worry about the details. Okay. We will fix it up later as we go along. So, I will be defining equivalence relation and we got a set E, okay, set of rep unique representatives. Then we said if this set, okay, if I translate it by means of rationals, okay, if between minus 1 and plus 1, then R plus E equal to S plus E if and if R equal to S. That is where R and S are rationals in minus 1 to plus 1. Okay. Now, what we proved is if countable additivity whole or were true, then I will get a contradiction. See, because measure of V must be either 0 or positive. If it is 0, then I claim, okay, 0, 1 is contained in union E n. That is, 0, 1 is contained in the interval 0, 1 is contained in E. Therefore, measure of 0, 1, namely length of 1, length of 0, 1 should be less than or equal to 1, but that is equal to 0. Right? Are you following? Okay, let me just go back. Okay, now what is the contradiction? The contradiction is since 0 1 is contained in E, okay, measure of 0 1 that is equal to length of 0 1 that is equal to 1, okay, that should be less than or equal to measure of E. Right? So if e, if C is positive, this will be a true statement. But on the other hand, if C is positive, then let us look at that. E is contained in minus 1 to 2, therefore measure of E should be less than or equal to 3 by the same reason. But we know if C is positive, measure of E is infinite. So that is a contradiction. Right? So if I assume it is 0, then it is a contradiction because if measure of E is 0, then this will be 0, but this will be 1, that is a contradiction. Do you see that? So what transfers is, so we cannot expect. We are not true. Is countable additive. So what we do is we restrict the instead of p of r k or p of r to zero infinity. Okay, what we do is we restrict to some class. 
some class let us call it m let us call it or l okay some class some class of subsets a subsets of p of r and there we show that m is countably additive okay again try to understand see these are the intuition additive ideas you have to get used to that i would like to define mesh of any subset a of r but it turns out if i have the natural requirements okay like monotonicity countable additive positive translation invariant etc then i cannot expect okay i get a contradiction therefore there are two things one is remove one other conditions or the other thing is restrict the class of subsets on which i can define the notion of measure or me notion of length okay so how do i restrict that class that is the next thing there is again the geometry i'll just quickly explain okay as i said try to get ideas okay let's go that go to that the idea is so how to restrict the thing is if i have some interval j okay i am thinking of as a closed and bounded but don't worry about that now suppose my set e okay a is a subset of r okay then think of this okay then i can think of j intersection a i will think of a as just an interval but it will be again easier to think of r k right suppose i have an interval j in this is an interval j and this may be my set a this a is a subset of rk all right then there are two things one is this is this and the other one is this one right so th this fellow is nothing other than a intersection j or let us say j intersection a and this fellow is from j remove y yeah. yeah so this is j intersection y and this is sorry i forgot the picture is wrong let us do that i will do it again the picture i have drawn is wrong this is not what i want so this is my j in rk and this is my set okay a then what do i have two things this is j intersection a this is j so this fellow is j intersection a and this fellow is from j remove a right so my a becomes okay union of two disjoint sets okay so what i want is i want them to add up okay so i am going to say a belong to script a the allowable or admissible sets sets are are in or are in the domain of m if okay measure of j turns out to be measure of j intersection a plus measure of j minus a okay so these are these things we are going to call measurable sets okay so pause review proceed prp okay now the next thing is i want a f function from r k to r okay then i want to talk about interval of f okay over r k let us say to start with r k how do i define it what kind of functions are allowed for example for riemann okay the natural choice will be f continuous and, and my domain should be closed and bounded interval okay then i can also extend it to riemann interval function Okay. So here, what I want to do is, what kind of a thing? Okay. Again, let us look at it. So this is my thing, 
and this is my range this is my range or image of f right now let us assume these are the partitions okay these are the partitions okay now let j be one of the partitions okay j is a partition of range of f partition interval right then i can look at f inverse of j so f inverse of j may be this right therefore what are the recall how we define step functions so i can define step function here so what i do is so this is the range and therefore take some point okay here okay call it let us say alpha then for each j alpha j is defined some thing in that interval then i can define alpha j right into this measure of this set measure of f inverse of j this is f inverse of j do that and this j varying with partition finite number of partition or the partition range of f. okay if you don't like let us say range of f equal to let us say j1 union jn this is a partition then let us look at f inverse of j1 jk etc now jk may be let us say alpha a k b k okay suppose my jk is this then i can define an approximation approximate step or simple function i can define it like this simply a k or take any alpha k here okay into measure of f inverse of jk i want to define but f inverse of jk should make sense remember f inverse of jk should be in the admissible set it should be a measurable set right therefore i define f from r k to r to be measurable okay if for every j in r interval f inverse of j belong to a that is it's also measurable okay please go to the first session i have explained these ideas so i am i am sure you will, you may be overwhelmed but as i said please don't worry much try to think about get some kind of an idea intuitive idea as you go along you will do better okay without that if i keep doing okay you can only check line by line you may not even know why we did various thing for example we define why measurable sets are defined how it is defined how why measurable functions are defined and why we have to restrict the class of measure to some proper sub proper uh, family of subsets of r or rk not we don't want to define measure on the entire power set okay we explain various things okay please go through it and from the next lecture onwards we will go through a very very rigorous treatment of this okay but please review it at least twice this will make your life easy mm -hmm.